this challenge, you'll need to unlock a briefcase by decoding a series of ciphers. Each time you crack a code, you'll get access to more information, which you will need to complete the challenge. In this challenge, you'll need to think cryptographically to crack the codes and retrieve the messages. Remember to look for patterns and common letters as you make your code theories so that you can decipher the text and then solve the riddles. I'm just going to very quickly tell you about two kinds of different encryption, which is a way that we turn plain text, which you can read, into cipher text, which no one can interpret, right? You actually will have to do several different ones, but the two basic ones that I want to talk to you about are, first, what we call a substitution cipher. Now, a substitution cipher can work very, very simply. If we take every letter in the alphabet, say, for example, A, B, C, all the way up to Z, we can just substitute every single one of these letters for a number or a different symbol or a different kind of letter. So, for example, if we were to take all of the letters A to Z and offset them by five, the first letter would be written as the sixth letter, which would be an F. And then the next letter along would become a G, and an H all the way, and then I guess the Z would be, well, you'd have to loop back around because there is not a 31st letter. I guess this would become an E, so you've got the complete loop, okay? Now, as you can see, this is a very, very simple code to break. We'll let you start off nice and gently. However, even if you didn't know that every single letter was in order, right, it wouldn't be too difficult to break this code because, say, for example, I'll just use another color here. Say we actually had them all jumbled up and just said, oh, I don't know, maybe we make this U, L, T, I, etc. And then we end on some other letter, like say, what have I not used? A G, okay? Now you're then saying, oh, they're all jumbled up. How am I gonna work out? There's so many more combinations, but it still isn't that difficult because if you think back to our original alphabet, A to Z, some letters are used more frequently than others. Some are very common. Can you guys tell me what's a really common letter? E. It's E. E is the most common, which is why if you open up a bag of Scrabble tiles or something like that, you'll see loads of E's, not many Z's, not many Q's, and so on. So this idea of looking at a message, we look at this garbled up message, and we're like, I wonder what this says. We can go and look for the frequency of different letters. We might work out, okay, it was going to be an M, wasn't it? Would have been the next letter. So E, wherever it's really E, will turn into M, and we would notice, oh, M is clearly the most common letter in this encrypted text. So we would say, that's probably going to be E. Does that make sense? And that process is called frequency analysis. So this is just the first kind of basic cipher that I wanted to explain to you. There's one more that I wanted to show you that's just phenomenally cool. The maths of it is really amazing. We can't go into all of the maths, but I'll show you the basic idea. See all of this? What's the maths underneath it? It's actually very simple. It's just addition, isn't it, right? Um, if we represent these all numerically, you know, one turns into six, two turns into seven, I'm just adding on a number every time. And addition is so straightforward that that's why it's easy to crack this, right? The other problem is uh, this key, in this case, it'd be five. Five is the key. Once you know you offset by five, you've cracked the whole thing, right? That number there is what we call a secret key. If you use that to jumble up your message and I find out about it, it's over. I can completely work out your message. You have to keep that key private and secret, right? This other kind of encryption that I wanna to talk to you about is called public key encryption. Public key? The idea is this number over here that we use to jumble up, you can actually just keep it in the public. Anyone can know about it, but you still can't actually read anyone's messages. Here's the way it works, it's actually very clever. Even though it's called public key encryption, it's actually more like public lock encryption. Imagine what you had was a bag full of padlocks, right? And you could say, okay, anyone who wants to send me a message, just take one of these padlocks out of the bag. They're just out in public. Just, you know, take that padlock and slap it onto a box. I'm the only person who has the key who can unlock that. Does that make sense how I can keep that number in the public, everyone can know about it, but you still can't read my messages because only I have the key. I remember the maths here was about addition, very simple. How could we have something that uses maths that keeps a number in public, but then allows you to have the secret that actually unlocks it? Well, here's the way it works. We take a number like this, 
a large number that is left in public. Anyone can see it. And in fact, every website that you have to log into or you buy things from that keeps things you know, encrypted will have a number like this. It's obviously much, much longer. It's actually hundreds of digits, but this is just for illustration. The private key is one of the factors of this number. Now, I'm just going to go out on a limb and guess that you probably don't know what the factors of this number are. It's been chosen very specifically. This number has exactly two factors, I mean, apart from itself and one. They happen to be 23 and 89. Now, can anyone have a guess? These numbers here, they haven't been chosen at random. Can anyone have a think? What kind of special properties might they have? Are they prime? They're prime. Well done, Gemma. That's why 2047 doesn't have any other ways you can factorize it. Because if these had more factors, then so would this number, right? Now, can you imagine if you had a number like this, it's hundreds of digits long, and instead of adding this number on to everything, you actually multiply by this. So you get a whole new number at the end because you've multiplied by this enormous number. And you've got here in secret one of these numbers. You can very easily undo the encryption that you did using your secret prime numbers. But if someone wanted to try and find your secret prime number, they'd have to go through this hundreds of digits long number and just keep trying different options. The kind of encryption that we have at the moment with these hundreds of digits, they call it like 128-bit encryption, 256-bit encryption. That talks about how large this number is. With today's fastest computers, it would take longer than the age of the observable universe just to unfactorize this number and work out what the keys are. And by the way, by the time you work that out, guess what? Tomorrow, they've got a new key, so it didn't matter that you actually cracked it. Isn't that clever that prime numbers are used to keep everything that we do on the internet safe. But of course, your task today is to undo that. You're going to meet ciphered text and we want you to create the plain text that you'll get out of it. Now, like I said, you'll have several codes to crack. Um, you're going to be using that machine over there which has codes inside it. Once you do that, there are three numbers that you want to find out. A, B, and C. As you crack the codes, you'll find those numbers and then you're going to bring those to this, which looks like an embarrassing meme, but actually this is, this final number here is going to be a combination to unlock a briefcase and whoever gets to that first and unlocks it using A, B and C to solve the equations, they're gonna be the winning team for this challenge. In this challenge, you'll need to think cryptographically to crack the codes and retrieve the messages. Remember to look for patterns and common letters as you make your code theories until you decipher the texts and solve the riddles. Oh, microscope. 18. Yeah, we were looking at it. But we didn't know. She was like, yes. Yeah. Microscope. And we're like, what? <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay.